Hey viewers, this is my 1954 Indian Scout bike and it's got the uh, Sturmy Archer three-speed hub on here. It's a type AW with a 54 date code on here. So this this uh, hub is about 61 years old. So I thought it'd be fun to take this apart, clean it, lube it, you know, basically just do an overhaul on this uh, 61 year old Sturmy Archer hub and see what's inside this. So I'm gonna start off by removing the cable here. And then I've got a 15 millimeter wrench. So I'm gonna loosen these axle nuts here. And interesting, on the uh, this side over here where it's got the uh, indicator pin and everything, like, it's got these. And interesting, over on the uh, left side, it's got one of those as well. I thought that was a mistake. I thought it was supposed to be just a regular nut. But looking at old uh, parts diagrams of these hubs, they show uh, having one of these on both sides, which I don't know why that was, but uh, so apparently this is the way it's supposed to be. So pull this off. There. Okay, so now that I got the uh, wheel off the bike, I got over here on the table, and I can start taking this apart, and I'll remove this indicator pin first, and just basically unscrew this, like the chain going in there, just unscrew it counterclockwise, take it and put it aside. And I recommend when you're taking these things apart, keep them in uh, approximately the order that you uh, took the parts off. So, and also keep, in, uh, keep them in order of like what side they were on. So this is the drive side here. So I'll pull this uh, axle nut off here. And I'll put this over on there. And then I've got this little uh, lock washer here. And so it's got these little uh, fin parts and those go facing in. And then I'm going to flip the wheel over. And I've got the axle nut over here. And again, I got another lock washer on here. It's got the fins also facing in. Just like that. Put those over there. Flip the wheel back over. Okay, now I'm going to pull this cog off. And the cog's being held on. There's like a uh, little uh, split ring kind of thing going around here. And there's these little three little notches in there. I can use one of those. Just use a little flat tip screwdriver. Kind of get it in there. Get it in one of these. And you can kind of pry the ring out. And once you kind of get it out, then you kind of go around and just pry it up and don't lose it because it will want to fly off like that. And put that aside. Okay, now I can pull the cog off here and be aware of any spacers. So there, oh, there's one spacer on the outside here. And be aware of the orientation of the cog here. And the concave side was facing down or in. And I'll put that aside there. And so you want to make sure that you put the same number of spacers on there so that the chain line, and then there was a spacer on the inside there, so I'll pull that off there. Okay, now I'm going to use a vise, and I'm going to have uh, the non-drive side facing up here. I'm going to use the vise to hold the flats of the axle to keep it from turning. And so, and I'm just going to, uh, I'm not going to crank it down, just kind of, just enough to hold the axle to keep it from turning. And then I want to remove this uh, lock nut here. So I'm using a 15 millimeter wrench from on this side here. And then there's a washer here. And then I want to remove this cone here. I can turn this by hand, or there's flats on here, which I think fit a 16 millimeter wrench. And I've got that cone off. Put that aside. Okay, I'm back over here on the drive side here, and oh, there was a, this little uh, cap here that didn't come off. That was underneath the uh, the cog, so I'll put that aside. And now I want to remove this uh, ball cup here, and there's uh, notches over here and over here like little uh, flats and what I want to do is I'm going to use a, a screwdriver or a punch to uh, hit these little notches 
and to get this to turn counterclockwise to unscrew this from the hub shell so I'm going to use a uh, screwdriver to just sit right into these flats like this and then use a hammer just to kind of tap this and try to get this thing to turn There we go. And unscrew this counterclockwise. And let's get it so far now you can unscrew this. and remove the whole assembly from the hub shell, just like that. Now I'm going to use my vise again to hold uh, the non-drive side flats of the axle here. So I want the drive side part here facing up. And then I'm just going to have this holding the axle there to keep it from turning while I work on the rest of this part here. Now I'll start taking this assembly apart here. So I'm going to remove this lock nut up here. And this is on there pretty tight. That was a 15 millimeter. And then there's a little uh, lock washer part under here. Pull this off. And see it's got little fins here which hold the cone to keep it from turning. And so now I can remove this cone and then the cone's usually spring-loaded here, so I want to kind of hold this part down, the driver, hold the driver down so I can uh, remove the cone easier. Set the cone aside. Now I can lift the driver off, like that. Set that aside there. And I've got a spring here, and then there's like a little cap in here that's on the top of the spring there. Set that aside there. And I'll pull this part off. This is the ball cup that we unscrewed. There's the flats. Put that aside. And then we got this part here. Put that aside. And I rearrange these parts over here. And there's a washer. Okay, I'm not used to having that washer there, but there's a washer right there. And. There's this little part here, and so it's got these little uh, notches in here, those face down. And there's a key here. I push this little key out here. Use some needle noses here to kind of grab on the key here and pull it out. Like that. And see that little hole in there? That's where the indicator pin screws into. And then I can lift this little clutch off here and then there's this little part down here that goes down there and I can pull this off here it's got all the little planetary gears in there and it's got the poles down here and there's the axle and so now we have it mostly disassembled other than these sub-assemblies here Okay, I've cleaned all the, the little individual parts now in uh, mineral spirits, and so now I need to start taking apart these uh, sub-assemblies, and so I can clean those as well. Okay, I need to pull these bearings out of the driver part here, and there's a little retainer ring in there that holds them in, and it's usually in there pretty tight, so I think I, I like mounting this thing into a vise to kind of hold it just loosely, just uh, I don't want to damage the part there but I need to be able to uh, pry this little ring out there. I'll use, use a, a flat tip screwdriver to kind of reach under there and kind of pry it up. And so there's this little ring there and then there's the uh, bearings in a little uh, retainer cage there. And so that's a part. So I can clean these parts. 
Then I also want to pull the bearings out of the non-drive side and they're in there the same way they are in the driver. There's a little uh, retainer ring in here. So again, I'm going to use my flat tip screwdriver to carefully pry this little retainer ring out of there like that. And I can lift these bearings out as well. So I want to clean this whole hub shell and these parts. Okay, I'm ready to uh, reinstall the bearings back in the hub. And I've got the bearings. I'm just going to reuse them. They're, they seem like they're in decent shape. Uh, they're not ex real expensive to, re to replace, but I don't feel like going to the bike shop. So I'm going to uh, squeeze um, in some grease in between all of the bearings in the cage here and then I'm going to set the uh, bearings down into the uh, the hub here the hub shell this is the non-drive side with the flat side facing up like that and then I've got the little retaining ring here and I'm going to install this with the flat side facing down and then use a hammer just to tap this down around and I want it to be kind of flush with uh, the top of the uh, the part here the the, uh, the shell now same thing with the driver part here I've got the bearings and I'm just going to squeeze in some uh, fresh marine grease in between each of the, the bearings in the cage Kind of just pack the pack the bearings here with grease, and then I'm gonna set these into the driver here with the flat side of the cage facing up. And again, I've got the uh, retainer ring here. I'm gonna install this with the flat side facing down, like this, and then with a the hammer, just tap this down. And I want it to be flush with the uh, the top of the driver here. Okay, so I got the ball cup here, and I want to remove these bearings. There's a little uh, cover here that's kind of holding those in, and this is a little bit different. This is uh, it's recessed down in here. There's like a little lip on the ball cup here on this one. On the uh, newer one, that's not like that. Um, but what I want to do is take this little uh, retaining cover here and pry that out just carefully. So just kind of go around and pry it up just a little bit okay so I got the little uh, retaining cover here off and then I can take these bearings and just dump them out into a bowl there was like no grease in there whatsoever and so I can clean these parts and I have fresh bearings so I'm just going to install brand new bearings in there Okay, there were 24 uh, bearings that came out of the uh, ball cup, and I've got a, a bearing gauge here, and so I can try them in the various holes here. They're not 5.30 seconds, so try them here, and it goes through. That's uh, 3 16 inch bearings, and I have some like right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put fresh bearings in there. Okay, I put my new bearings in there, and I've got my uh, grease gun here. I'm going to put some uh, grease around the race in the ball cup here and then place the bearings into the race one at a time till I have all have 24 bearings in there I didn't count the bearings in here I just kind of dumped them in the bowl and 24 bearings around there and then I got this little uh, cap thing here this little retainer cap I'm going to slide this on here and then use a hammer to tap this down around and, and down like that so now I can take apart the planetary uh, cage here and there's just uh, these little pins here and I can just lift these pins out and they hold in the planetary gear so each of the 
the gears will pop out now like that and then there's the paws down here and then there's so there's a paw there's a pin and then there's uh, some springs in there and so I want to I can just go ahead and push these pins out just push them down from here and then pull them out like this and I pull the paw out don't lose there's like a little uh, tiny metal spring in there don't lose that and pull this paw uh, this paw out here let's push this pin out there and then I pull that spring out like that and so now I can clean up all these parts okay so now I'm ready to reassemble the uh, planetary cage assembly and there's two paws and two springs and then there's a pin for each of the, the paws there and if you look at the paws there's um, a flat side and then there's a side with little ramps on the edges I want the uh, side with the ramp edges facing up as I install it in this cage like this and it looks like the two sides are uniform on this one and so it shouldn't matter which direction I put those in and then there's the spring and there's like a little uh, leg on the spring that's sticking up and then there's like a, a long leg of the spring that just sticks straight out so as I assemble the list there's like a little uh, hoop here on the spring. I want that hoop to line up with the hole on the pawl. And so I want that little uh, leg that sticks up to be back behind the spring like that and then the long leg to be back behind the spring like that. And so then I want that hoop to line up with the hole as best I can. And then very carefully I'm going to insert the pawl into the cage assembly here. And I'm going to take one of the pins with the tapered side, I'm going to put, insert the tapered side, insert it through the cage, down through the pawl, and hopefully down, oh, the, the spring slipped out of place there. This is the tricky part here, is trying to get, hold the spring there, so that you can get the whole thing installed there, and get the pin down through the pawl, and through the spring. and there I got that down and so it should feel kind of springy there as you push in so I got one in and so and do, do the other one the same way I want the ramp side facing up get the spring back behind there with the little leg sticking up there the long leg slide this in here get the pin down through the pawl and and down through the spring and so now both of the paws are nice and springy so that's the hard part there and I flip this over and then each of the planetary gears just slide it right in there and so you want the uh, small part of the pin facing up so I'm just going to slide this down through there like that and just install each of the planetary gears like this Okay, got that. Now I want to uh, apply some lube to these uh, parts on here. I have some finish line wet. Uh, it's a synthetic lubricant. Uh, this is a, you want to go, use a good synthetic oil. Uh, don't use like three in one oil. Uh, it just is not very good for this. Don't use WD-40. Don't. Uh, Phil's Tenacious is probably not a good choice either. But a, a nice synthetic oil. Just get a little bit in into the planetary gears just a drop here and there kind of work it in and then also on the the paws there kind of get it worked in there like this and get those all worked in like that and now we can go ahead and set that aside 
And I've got this part here, and there's two poles on here that I want to uh, remove. Again, there's a pin in here, and I can kind of just push the pin up, pull that out, and pull the pawl out. And then there's a spring in there as well. And the same thing on this. Just push the pin up there, pull the pin out, and pull the pawl out there. Now I can go ahead and clean these parts and get them looped up. Okay, we're ready to uh, reassemble this part here now. And so there's two pawls, two springs, and two pins. Now the the pawl, there's a short end and a long end. The short end is going to uh, be on the inside there. So the long arm is going to be facing on the outside. And then the spring is going to fit on top of the pawl as we insert it here. And then there's the little uh, tail that sticks out here that's going to go back behind the pawl here. We line the little hoop of the spring in there and then the long arm sticks out here like this. I'm going to insert this in carefully in to where the pawl lines up with the hole in the cage. I can slide the pin down. Again, the tapered end of the pin goes in first. And it's going to go through the spring and now through the pawl. And so then the pawl should be nice and springy like this in that direction there. So again, do the other one here. So the short end goes in. I have the, the triangle facing that way. The pawl is going to go, or the spring is going to go on the pawl like that. I'm going to insert this in so that the spring and the hole in the pawl line up with the hole in the cage. And then take the, the tapered end of the pin. That's going to go in down through the spring, down through the pawl. And so they're nice and springy like that. Then I'm going to take a little bit of the synthetic lubricant here. Just put a little bit up there, a little bit down here, a little bit up here, a little bit down here, and kind of work it in a little bit. There, got all done with that part. Okay, I'm ready to put start putting this whole thing back together again. I'm um, going to start off with the axle here, and I'm going to mount it in the vise with the vise holding onto the flats of the axle, and I want the slot part here facing up. So just put this in here and hold, and I don't need to clamp it down real hard, just enough to hold it there. And so I got the sun gear here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll put just a little bit of oil just around down in here. And I'm going to take this part here, the planetary cage, and I'm going to slide this down over here like this. And so that the planetary gears will engage on the sun gear, just like that. Then the next thing here is I'm going to take this little collar here, slide this down, and I want the hole here to line up with the slot. And I've got the clutch here, and one side is just flat, and the other side has these little steps. I want the step, start, step parts here facing up, and so that's going to slide down over here like that. And then these little steps are going to fit between the tops of the pins here. Then next, I have this little key, and it's round on the bottom, and there's these little uh, flat parts. I want the flat parts facing up, and I'm going to slide it down through this hole in this little collar, and it's going to go across through the slot there, like that. Yeah, I'm just going to put just a little bit of oil just a, a round on in these parts here. And the next thing, I've got this little uh, part here. It's got these little slots on this, these slots are going to line up with the key there. And it's just going to fit down over the key and push down all the way like that. And then there was a washer here. I place the washer down over there like that. And now I'm going to use the uh, little indicator pin here. I'm going to thread this down through the top here. And I'm going to screw this in, so turn it in uh, clockwise. It's going to screw into the little key down here, and now I can lift this up just like that. So now I'll install the gear ring here, and slide this down over the indicator pin chain. 
and that go down and mesh with the planetary gears like that and now I can do the uh, ball cup and slide this down and then this push the uh, the paws in so that it slides down over the paws like that okay now I can install this spring here and so I'll slide the spring down over the chain like this and I have the little uh, cap on there and those, the little cap is on the top part there now I can install the driver with the little prongs facing down and those will engage with the clutch like that and now the, sp the spring may pop up through there or not and so now I can put the uh, cone on here and I'm going to thread the cone onto the axle be careful not to cross thread it I'm going to unscrew this indicator pin just get this the heck out of the way here pull that out and I can push the driver down and get the cone tightened all the way down finger tight down against the uh, the bearings and make sure the driver is fully down there and now go ahead and unscrew the cone about one quarter turn and so now I'm going to use this lock washer here it's got the little uh, tabs on there and it's keyed so it's only going to fit on the axle one way and so I'm going to slide this down over there and I want the uh, little ears here to line up with the flats on the cone so I'm going to go ahead and just turn the cone loosen it just a little bit more so that it lines up with the ears on the, the, uh, the cone there and that will keep the cone from turning and then I can fit this lock uh, nut onto here and screw this on and you want to make sure you don't cross thread this and so there and then tighten this down against the lock washer there and then I'm going to tighten this the 15 millimeter wrench and that will tighten down against the lock washer and cone and make sure that that doesn't turn like that okay now I'm ready to install this whole assembly down into the hub shell so uh, before I do this I want to take a little bit of grease and put it down along these threads on the ball cup here and just kind of smear that down around then slide this down and you, you want to make sure you get these paws down here to engage so you might have to turn it backwards a little bit like counterclockwise to get it so they, they kind of uh, get engaged down into the notches down there then you'll screw this in clockwise now when you get it uh, finger tight in there we're going to tighten it again with a screwdriver and a hammer using these, these little notches here and kind of use this to kind of tighten it in there continuing to turn it clockwise like that so we get it nice and locked in there now flip the wheel over now we need to install the non-drive side cone and so I'm going to just thread this down here like this and go down against the bearings down there and then I'm going to put the vise back under here to hold the flats of the axle that'll make it easier to adjust like this and so I can uh, tighten this down a little bit and I want to just kind of like back it off just maybe about a quarter of a turn I'm going to take my washer here, slide the washer back down on there and then I'm going to take my lock nut and slide my lock nut down here 
Okay, now this gets a little tricky. I need to uh, hold the cone and tighten the lock nut. But the cone is very thin there, so it's kind of a little hard to get the cone wrench on. So just do the best you can there. So I'm going to tighten the lock nut down. They get the cone wrench out of there. And now you can pull the uh, wheel off the vise here and test it to make sure it turns smoothly, but you don't want a lot of play in there either. So just a little bit of play is okay, but you don't want a lot of play, but you don't want it, uh, you want the wheel to turn smoothly too. So some sort, some like little area between the two. Now I can install this little washer here with the uh, little ears on there. I want the ears facing down and then install this little part here the uh, axle nut install that on there this is the non-drive side and I don't need to tighten this down yet flip the wheel over so I'm back over here on the drive side and there was this little uh, cover here slide this down under there and I want to install the cog so there was a spacer under the cog so that slides out just like there then the cog slides on and I want the concave fa part facing down and then there was a spacer on top of the cog and so now I need to install this little split ring here and then this can be a little tricky so kind of get one part engaged here um, like this and I can use maybe a screwdriver to kind of leverage it on there then I get a and then snap that on there. So now that's on there like that. I want this little washer over here on with the ears facing in and that's keyed and so the, uh, the lock nut here and then I can take the indicator pin and install this in and screw that into the key down inside the hub like that okay I'm ready to reinstall the wheel here um, I want to have the cog over on the drive side I'm going to bring the uh, the chain back and slide it over the cog and get it fully engaged there make sure the chain is fully engaged on the chain ring in the front and I'll bring this up here get the tire to go f squeeze up between the the brakes up here come on there we go and the uh, axle has the flats so I want the flats to fit up between these uh, the slots and the dropouts and so the uh, the washers I want the washers to be on the outside of the dropouts it's got those little uh, ears the little tabs they're gonna slide up into the dropouts as well there so I got that so I'm gonna pull the wheel back and then tighten down this side here like that and then pull the other side back get the wheel straight and then tighten that uh, axle nut down like that and get them both tightened like that. Then test pedal the uh, or there, make sure everything turns okay. Nice tension on the chain. Okay, that all looks good. Okay, now I want to hook up the uh, shift cable here. I want to make sure the uh, indicator pin is fully screwed in there. It is. And then this little uh, lock nut here, I want to have it uh, screwed all the way back so I have as much threading here as I can. And then I'm going to take the shifter, shift it into first gear and then take this shift cable here and thread this on I thread it on about halfway to begin with like about like that now shift this up into second gear now looking down in this hole here and I have a video that goes more in depth on uh, adjusting this whole shift cable thing but the shoulder of the indicator pin I want it to come out just past the end of the axle and it's coming out a little bit far so I'm gonna loosen this let it go in a little bit 
and that looks like about right like that. So now I can test the shifting. So I'm going to shift it into first gear. And in first gear, as I pedal, the wheel should turn slightly faster than the cog. And it is. So now in second gear, the uh, wheel should turn at the same speed as the cog. And it is. And then if I shift it up in the third gear, now the cog should turn slightly faster than the wheel. And it is. So everything looks good there. So now I'm going to tighten down this little lock nut. Now I'm almost done. I want to uh, add some oil to the inside of the hub. And so there's an oil port here. So I'm going to flip open the oil port. And I have a syringe here with some of the synthetic lube that I was using before in there. And so I'm going to use this to just inject... And I'm going to add about two teaspoons of oil to the inside through the oil port there. So, and I already added some before this, but there is some there. And now I can close the little oil port. Like that. And then I can pedal it around. That will distribute the oil to the inside of the hub there. Nice. All done. So that was overhauling a 60-year-old Sturmy Archer hub. Hope you found that useful or interesting. If you did, please click like on my video. I always appreciate getting likes on my videos. It helps me out. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, click the big subscribe button, and you'll see new videos as they come out. And I'm always coming out with new videos. And I'm also over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page, and I post a lot of stuff over there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.